If you haven't seen it yet, Tony Kuiper's new TK8 plugin for Photoshop is out. Tony feels it's his best panel yet, and I completely agree with him. I think experienced TK7 panel users will find all their familiar tools making the transition easy, but there's a bunch of new and updated stuff as well. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my five favorite new TK8 features. Somehow, Tony keeps finding ways to level up his panels. I think TK8 may have more new features than any previous update, while at the same time somehow retaining the familiar layout, taking up less space in your Photoshop workspace, and with even simpler controls. If you aren't familiar with the TK panel, in short, it's a Photoshop plugin for making advanced masks, such as luminosity masks, and for speeding up your entire Photoshop workflow. Kind of the way that phone apps make your smartphone better, the TK8 panel makes Photoshop better. So let's check out my five favorite new features. My first favorite is the new color grading feature. Photoshop gives us many tools for adjusting image color. However, one color adjustment tool that Photoshop doesn't have is a color grading wheel like the ones that Adobe added to both Lightroom and Camera Raw a while back. TK8 now gives us that tool in Photoshop. Like Lightroom and Camera Raw, you can adjust the color cast in the shadows, in the midtones, and in the highlights. And you can also adjust the brightness of the color grade in each tonal range. And because it's done with an adjustment layer in Photoshop, it's non-destructive. So you can do the color grading at any point in your Photoshop workflow, and you can fine tune it whenever you want. And I personally like the results better than color grading in Lightroom or Camera Raw. But it's even better than that, because you can also leverage the power of Photoshop's layers and masks. This means that you can use a sky mask on one color grading layer to color grade just the sky. And then you could create a land mask and use that to color grade the land separately from the sky. And this is something you can't do in Lightroom or Camera Raw. And there's my land color grade and my sky color grade. Or you could create a green color mask with the TK8 panel and use that on another color grading layer to color grade just the greens in your image. Just this one new feature alone is worth the price of the entire panel in my opinion. My number two favorite new feature is edge mask, which is another type of mask that the panel can now make in addition to all the other masks it can make. Where luminosity masks allow you to adjust areas of an image based on pixel brightness, and color masks allow you to adjust areas based on pixel color. Edge masks target adjustments to edges, or they can be used to protect edges. In my new course called the TK8 Video Guide, I show several ideas for using edge masks, but here's a quick one. Sometimes when we apply a soft glow or an Orton type effect to an image, the edges get blurred. To maintain the edge detail in the image, you can generate an edge mask, invert the edge mask so it'll now protect the edges, and blur them a bit, and now output the mask to the blur layer. Now the soft glow is where I want it, but the edge details are still there. And like I said, that's just one application for edge masks. My number three new feature is TK8's new watermarking tool. You access it with this button, and it's really easy to set up. You do need to have your own watermark file, however. This could be anything from a professional logo that you had designed, or it could be a simple PSD file with some text in it that you made yourself. You simply choose the watermark file on your computer, select where on the image you want it to be placed, set how far in from the edge it'll be placed, either by pixels or by percent, adjust the watermark size, choose the opacity, then click apply and let the panel do its job. The watermark feature has even been added to the TK web sharpener, which has been seriously upgraded in TK8 itself. 
So you can now check the logo box in the web sharpener to automatically add your watermark or logo to your web images as they're created. My number four favorite is layer mask mode. Layer mask mode has been kind of a hidden feature in previous panels, so it technically isn't new, but it's been improved and it has a new front and center location in the multi-mask module, so it feels like it's new. Layer mask mode has long been one of my favorite features, so I'm glad to see it get promoted. Most often, we create masks while viewing the mask preview itself. This is fine if we have a sense of what the mask needs to look like. But sometimes it's helpful to see how the mask works in combination with an adjustment to really get it right. Layer mask mode allows us to create masks on layers in real time so we can watch how the mask and the adjustment work together on the image. It also has a two-up mode, which allows us to see both the mask and the image at the same time. Again, I give a few examples in the TK8 video guide, but here's a quick one. Let's say I want to create more brilliance and contrast in these highlights. So I'll add a levels adjustment layer and make that adjustment. But I can tell I need to add a mask to target the adjustment and protect the brightest highlights and the darkest shadows. But I'm not sure what that mask might look like. So I'll go to layer mask mode and then I'll enter two up mode so I can view the mask and the image at the same time. Now I can rapidly swap out one mask after another until I find one that I think makes the image look best with this adjustment. I think the midtones too, in this case, is best. But I also want to customize that mask a bit. So now I can increase the mask contrast and see what the mask looks like and what the image looks like. I can also use the black brush to paint out areas of the mask where I want less of the adjustment to show through. Now I think I have the right combination, but look at that mask. I doubt I would have been able to create such a customized mask without layer mask mode. And my fifth and final favorite new feature is the new way to add my own Photoshop actions to the panel. It used to be a bit of a process to add your own actions to the TK panel, but now it's super easy. You open the user action menu right here, and then you just click on the plus. You find the action group where your action is located, and then you select the action that you want to add to the panel. And if I want to add more of my own actions to this menu, I can just click plus again and go through the same process to add another action. And I can add as many of my own actions as I want. So now, instead of going to the Photoshop action panel to run my own actions, I can simply do it from right here in the TK8 plugin. Pretty cool. So there you go. Those are my five favorite new TK8 features. Leave me a comment if you have any questions or let us know what your favorite TK panel feature is. If you'd like to find out more about the TK8 plugin, I put a link down in the description so you can check it out. And if you want help learning everything TK8 can do, there's also a link to check out my in-depth 36 chapter TK8 video guide course. And I'll be posting some new TK quick tips in the future here for TK8 on my YouTube channel, so stay tuned for those. That's all for now. Thanks as always for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.